everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rain. I'm in all in recovery from anorexia, and this week's actually four months in recovery. Yay! <laughs> Which is something I never thought I'd be able to do, and a lot of people I know would have never thought I'd be able to do. So I'm doing a QA, and a eat, eat with me type thing. It's, I'm having my lunch, it's like picky food. Probably not enough, but you know, I can get more. Mm -hmm. So, I think we're just going to start really. I don't really know what else to do. Um, so the first question is, how do you manage to overcome hard feelings and just face the food? Um, <laughs> is by telling myself, no food can hurt me. Diet culture just demonised literally every specific food in the entire world. Even if it's a vegetable or a fruit that's classed as healthy, it is always at some point deemed unhealthy. And you need to get over that fear by facing it. You're not gonna challenge it without facing it. Like, you will not get over it without challenging it. Oh, why did you start recovery? It was, my grandma's birthday actually <laughs> and I had a really I hit rock bottom and my mum and I were just having it's very scary times yeah. yeah and I just I couldn't I couldn't do it anymore I was so tired and I just thought I can't I can't do it I'm either gonna die or I'm gonna fight and I don't want to take the easy way out. Can't do that. Can't let everyone down. I would feel absolutely heartbroken if any one of my family died. So why isn't it the same for me? Do you do any form of exercise? No. Mm -mm. Uh, this ties in with a lot of other questions with over-exercising. I struggled with over-exercising so much, mm -hmm. um, deep in my eating disorder, and um, when I started recovery, I completely cut it all out. I did no exercising, no walking, nothing. I just sat down all day and I chilled, <laughs> and I distracted myself, because that's what my body needed, so I had to give it that. And as hard as it was, and how much the thoughts like how bad the thoughts were I still had to push through because exercise was giving in to anorexia and that's something that I didn't want to do I didn't want to give it that extra bit of control and a lot of people they think oh I can go out for a bit I can go for a walk I can I can work but when you are so malnourished or you have deprived your body of food for so long you cannot do that because your brain will link exercise to deserving food mm -hmm. or deserving rest and that's not what it is you need to rest and you need to eat in order to exercise it's not the other way around yeah and what your body went through it wouldn't be able to cope because it's healing mm -hmm. most difficult parts of recovery <laughs> Body image is definitely probably the most difficult part. And now that I look healthier, I know I look healthier. I, I literally, I, I, I look better, I do, I get that. But now I'm hearing that from other people and that they're seeing the changes, it's very difficult for me to keep going because my brain's thinking, oh, well, you look better. So what's the point in keep keeping going? You don't need to keep going, you look fine now, but that's not how it works. It's a mental illness, not a physical illness. And that's what most people don't understand. It doesn't matter your weight, your size, any of that. It matters your mental state. If your mental state is not right, then you are not right. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that the system doesn't understand either, which is really stupid. <laughs> Fave food you have discovered in recovery? Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had chocolate in like years. Oh my God, yeah. and it's I have to have it every single day now. Multiple times a day. I 
I had a rule that I was only allowed it once a day and I broke that a while ago and it's just, I have it multiple times a day now. And Ben and Jerry's ice cream. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not count calories when your head is just ingrained already? I do struggle a lot. My brain starts adding numbers up when I see them on packages. Uh, well, first of all, I don't weigh any food out. So that's quite, it's much easier to not count because I'm not weighing it out. So I don't know the portions. Portions. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't measure anything out. And if I do see stuff on packages that are like one package together and then my brain starts adding it up I count up in tens instead so if it's working out numbers I just go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and it confuses my head <laughs> <laughs> I, I just get it that way and or I distract myself it's getting easier to not count now yeah but I do, beginning, I do struggle quite a lot mm. yeah at the beginning it was very hard but the first day I decided to recover I deleted all apps, I disabled steps on my phone. Mm -hmm. I did all that because I don't need it. No. Why would I need it? That's another control. Mm. That I don't need. Yeah. Who cares about how many steps you do in a day? No. Your biggest wins in recovery? Um, being alive. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing, um, having a sleepover with my friends, eating out for lunch, no dinner, not lunch. Go I will be, cafe. I will be, um, I will be going out for lunch on Saturday, which will be a vlog mm -hmm. for Monday. But I went to a cafe yesterday mm -hmm. because I was hungry before my meeting with my nurse and I got a brownie and a smoothie. I would not have been able to do that even a month ago. No. I think that's the biggest one so far this week. Yeah, and it was so nice to be able to do that with you. Dancing around my kitchen. Yeah. Singing random songs that pop in my head. Yeah. Hugging my mum. <laughs> I haven't done that for a very long time. We have lots of hugs now, don't we? What are your, what are the biggest things you've noticed in recovery? My weight. But it's not a bad thing for it to change. My thing is, if you're still putting on weight, because you're eating when you're hungry, it means you're not at the weight you need to be at. Mm -hmm. My mental health has changed so drastically. So much better. Oh. I, I, I feel awake sometimes, most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Though I do get really tired really easily, but I just feel like there's something to live for. Yeah. Whereas before, even before anorexia was really bad, I still didn't. You still weren't in a happy place, was you? That was the beginning. Mm. <clears throat> okay. I think um, anorexia as well, the mental side of it, it makes you become younger mentally. You, you lose that maturity in your brain. Because it's so starved, you, you regress back into a real childlike form. What were your reasons to start All In Recovery? Like I said, um, I was at the lowest point in my life. And I just, I couldn't go back to where I was before and I couldn't go back <coughs> to hospitals. I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. So recovery, yeah. It's recovery, but I didn't want to follow a meal plan. I didn't want to get stuck on a meal plan because I knew I would get stuck on a meal plan. Mm -hmm. And that involves calories, and I could not do that. No. So, just kind of did it. And I think the thing that really kick started my all in recovery was when I doubled my portions for a whole day. Yeah. After that, it was just. Your body went, yes, let's do this. And it sort of. I think it made me realise it, it wasn't a bad thing. No. Definitely. Um, was it hard to go back to eating the foods you restricted when you were deep in your eating disorder? Yeah. 
It was very difficult. The first food I actually challenged was a flapjack. Mm. And it was, it was tiny really, yeah. but it freaked me out so much. I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. God. Yeah. That was a crunchy <laughs> bit of carrot. <laughs> um, I think the more you face it, the easier, easier it does get. The more you face fear foods, the easier facing foods become. And the more excited you get to face foods. Because yeah. you haven't eaten them in so long. So you miss them. Oh, right, right, right. And it just opens up something new to you, doesn't it? My God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you experienced extreme hunger? I don't think so. No. Personally, no. Not really. No. no, I don't. I don't. I don't think it is extreme hunger. I just think it's eating when you're hungry. Yeah, when I'm hungry, and I don't. I don't get that bottomless pit stomach. What extreme hunger is? Yeah. I've yet to experience that. Whether I will or not at all, but not yet. No. No. It might happen. It might not. <laughs> Favourite recovery mem memory so far? Oh, there's been lots, isn't there? Prom. Mm -hmm. That was good. I'm having an imprint, like, in, what's it called? Unplanned. <laughs> Sleepover. Yeah. Going swimming. Mm. Riding my bike. Riding your bike. All these things that you start to be able to do again. Mm. living life, isn't it? Milkshake with living. Yeah. Just getting Oliver. Getting Oliver. No, that stuff doesn't trigger me. Mm. However, healthy and obviously well, that triggers me a, a little bit. It doesn't trigger me as much as it used to. No. I remember when I first came home, someone said to me, you look really well. And I was like, oh, thank you. Yeah, but um, they didn't mean it like that. That's the but thing. It's hard though. You can't. Your brain doesn't. My brain. People with eating disorders' brain doesn't work like that. No. They hear that word and it translates to them bigger. Yeah. Fat, which literally does isn't bad at all. No. Your body needs fat in order to survive. Yeah. You need to keep warm. Yeah. But because of culture demonising it and society demonising it so much. It is programmed into our heads that fat mm. is a bad thing. Yeah. But well, it's not. Yeah. Everybody needs it. Mm. Okay. That's another thing you find. You're not cold. Yeah, I'm really hot at the moment. Yeah. And that's amazing because in the summertime, the last thing you want to be doing is putting on jumpers and, you know, your winter clothes in summer when everyone else is, is wearing summer clothes. <laughs> Um, do you weigh yourself? I do not. I had mum throw my scale away when I was away. However, I do get weighed by my team uh, every other week now, mm -hmm. which is exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and I do see the numbers, but I said I had this massive conversation with them saying that I need to see them go up in order to feel more intact with my body to know that it's okay to go up because I'm feeling happier which means the weight going up means that I'm getting happier mm -hmm. it doesn't mean anything bad it actually means like good yeah. it going down means bad because it will make me feel more alone yeah <laughs> what are some of your favorite recovery inspiration accounts that you follow I don't follow any mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, I find a lot of accounts can trigger me because there was this trend going around where people showed a photo of them saying like hating life and then one of them now saying loving life and I'm like <sighs> you're showing yourself unwell and then when you're happier but then at the same time you're telling people not to post before and after photos which is exactly what you're doing so i just don't follow anyone yeah 
fear you don't follow anyone, that's fine. For others it may help. Hmm. It may help other people. But for me, it just doesn't. Hmm. Something you haven't challenged but are excited to try. Oh. What haven't I challenged? I haven't challenged quite a few things. I haven't challenged cheese, but I was thinking cheese. <laughs> Do you know your favourite thing when you were younger? Lasagna. Yeah. yeah. I haven't challenged pizza. Um. What was the first food you ate after restriction and your safety? The first food I ate. What was it? Pasta. Uh uh. No. It was. <laughs> Porridge. Porridge, yes. Porridge. Yeah. It was porridge. Oh my god. I had so much porridge in the start of my recovery in the ship. Mm. <laughs> that was very much your safe food, wasn't it? Mm. I don't have really have a safe food now. No. You don't need to. Mm -mm. Mm. Someone asked what trigger you're eating before to start. There's never a specific trigger mm. to start an eating disorder. And it's a build up of experiences or it might just be, it could just be literally anything. You could, I don't know. I don't really know what triggered it to be honest. It just started and There's them no. <laughs> um there's never you can never pinpoint it. Mm. You can never pinpoint it. That's what I hate. I hate about the services. They try and get you to figure out what started your eating disorder when you can't do that because there's so much that could have triggered it. That could go towards it. That there's never going to be a direct answer as to where it started from. No. So the answer is no. I do not know. <laughs> um, not sure. What do you hope to do in the future, career-wise? Well, I would love to be an actor. I've always wanted to be an actor since I saw Emma Watson in the first Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if I can't do that. I am going to go to college to study architecture. You're going to build me a house one day, aren't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not out of Lego. <laughs> or <Really>? on Sims. <laughs> Is there any part of you that would want to go back to an eating disorder? Sometimes. When I find it really hard, yeah. But in general, no. It was hell. And thinking about it makes me want to cry because I just didn't see how bad it was. Mm. But nah, nothing would make me want to go back. How do you deal with bloating slash pain? Bloating does go down eventually. Bloating is temporary, really. I had really bad bloating at the start of recovery, um, but I just wore my UDI and got on with it, really. Mm. Distracted myself. But now, uh, I don't get as bloating as bad because her body's used to getting the right amount of food. Yeah, and you can, and you're able to move around more, which helps. Hmm. <laughs> What's been the most challenging slash rewarding thing in recovery? Um, I don't know. Hmm. Being with your family, not being away from us. Hmm. Thanks. Um. Yeah. Most challenging thing, I think, really, is deciding to recover. Yeah. That is the hardest thing because you feel you do not have, you will lose control, and it's not true. And you've already lost control to your eating disorder. Mm -hmm. When you choose to recover, you may feel out of control, but actually you're in control, which sounds mind boggling, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's true. Biggest motiva motivator when things get tough, Oliver. My little baby Oliver, he is 
my pride and joy, <laughs> even though he's a pain. <laughs> and, oh no, I just love him so much. I remind myself, if I'm not here for him, no one will be. And I need to be here for him, so I do. Favourite chocolate bar, seeing as you're doing a week of chocolate bars. <laughs> my favourite one, ooh, changes every day. <laughs> I love Kinder, mm. and the bars. And not Kinder Bueno, like the Kinder Bars. Um, Galaxy. I used to love Galaxy when I was younger. I love Crunchy and Yorkie. I love them all. I love chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> Do you believe in 100% recovery? Yeah. Yeah, I do. You can recover from anything. It's the same with if you're an addict to alcohol, drugs, smoking. You can recover from it. If you put a lot of time and effort into it, you will get there eventually. Mm -hmm. It just takes time. You will want to go back, you may go back, but you always, if you want to get better, you will get better. Yeah. You keep moving forward. You keep going, even when it gets tough. Even when your brain is screaming at you not to do it, you still go and you still do it and you push forward and eventually it will stop. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you feel to lose your sick body? To be honest, I don't care. <laughs> um... um it was tough at the start, seeing my body change when even no one else saw it. But the more you gain weight, the easier it is to accept yourself. And yeah, I just, just keep going really and start. you start to learn to love your body. And it's just, it's great. Mm. I'm, I'm very happy about it. <laughs> and I'm very lucky to have such a supportive parents and siblings. I, I love my mum so much. She's, <laughs> she's helped me a lot. She has. She's my best friend. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because she's here. <laughs> um, did your relationship with your parents even ever change negatively due to your eating disorder? Take it away, Mum. <laughs> no. No, always loved you, always supported you. Even when you threw things at me. <laughs> told me to leave you alone and everything else I um, I was like a boomerang I just kept coming back I think the negative thing though was that I wasn't able to hug yeah. them or talk to them no. you, you shut down completely I was like I was there but I wasn't there mm -hmm. I was like an empty shell Yeah. which is very difficult as a parent mm. I can only imagine how it is. But you just keep going and you keep being persistent. You know me, I don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest bit of advice. <clears throat> it's going to be hard. Yeah, it really is. I'm not going to lie to you. It's probably the hardest decision that I've made in my entire life. But you just got to do it for your younger self to make your younger self proud and for your older self to make your older self proud and you just got to keep fighting now it's easier said than done yeah you have your good days and you have your bad days have your, obviously everyone does yeah even in general life in general that's what people do but you know the next day is a fresh start and you keep on going i wish you have a blip mm. blips don't okay. give up no don't give up. Because if you give up, you're never going to get anywhere. You're going to stay stuck and yeah. you're going to be stuck. And that's not what you want. Keep pushing yourself forward. Yeah. And Always have a reason to recover. Don't recover for anyone else except yourself. Yeah. Because it will not last. No. And always challenge yourself. Because mm. otherwise you will get stuck. Mm. Definitely. Don't stick to the same foods. No. It doesn't have to be a big challenge. No. No, it could time. be like a tiny challenge of like breaking a rule. Yeah. And like chewing a certain amount of times. So you can yeah. 
not count how many times you chew or, mm-hmm. you know? Um, goals for six months, one year, two years. Wow. <laughs> in six months, I hope to be in an agency for my acting. Yeah. Um, in a year. Hope to be in your first. Year of college. Yeah. Oh yeah, year of college or in a first. Production. In production, yeah. And for two years, I want to move out. <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> <laughs> what, with my mate? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to move out. You, you have to try. And you will get that relationship back. But as a, as a parent, you need to fight. And you need to fight the system. And you need to push. Even if it's not... You know, they say oh, it's not critical, that they seem to be fine. You know as a parent that your child isn't. So you have to keep fighting and read lots of research. Yeah. And never give up on your child. Ever. Mm. What are your opinions? This is the last one. What are your opinions um, on inpatient and hospitals? Mm. <laughs> um, personally, Inpatient never helped me. It made me worse yeah. because I was surrounded by people that didn't want to get better. For some people, it may help. It may help them tremendously. But for me, it just wasn't the right place. The right place for me was here. Okay. In hospital, again, it, it helped me kickstart my recovery, yeah, but there were other people in there suffering too. And it just... It was dreadful, and being in hospital and seeing those four walls mm. all the time, I think I... It drives you a bit crazy, it really don't you? It makes you go a bit crazy, and you get very impatient. And you get left with your thoughts a lot. Mm. But, do you know what, having a good team around you in the hospital yeah. makes a world of difference, and, and that's one thing you did yesterday, wasn't it? Yesterday I went to see the nurse. It saved my life. Oh, nurse is, yeah. The main nurse, and I thanked her for everything, and I got closure from that hospital because I, I every time we drove past it, my heart started racing. I got sweaty. I got memories because there was no happy memory there. Mm. But yesterday, I had my first happy memory there, and I was smiling, and they were all smiling, and we had hugs and everything, and. It, it, I just needed that closure, I think. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think they needed it too. Yeah, well, they were just talking about you as yeah. soon as we walked in the room. Yeah. They were like, oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, that was that was definitely a positive thing, to say mm-hmm. thank you to them and for you to have that closure. Yeah. And now it's moving on now. Next chapter of my life. Yeah. I know I'm not going back there. They know I'm not going back there. Yeah. It just feels a bit more secure. And they're so proud of you. Yeah. yeah. So, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry about the noise. My dog is having a moment. To be tapping on. Um, I will see you on Monday. And I hope this video helps. And if you want to have a parent or guardian watch this with you to help them understand eating disorder a bit more, then... It's a really good idea too. Send it to them or it was back and get them to come sit down with you. <laughs> um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you on Monday.